During my last year of high school, I knew I wanted to study somewhere else, maybe Oslo. I believe it was my mom or dad. They came to me and be like, hey, do you want to do college in the States? That sounded like something fun. When I got there, it was just pitch black. And I got into my room and it's empty. And so I ate my mac and cheese on my bed there without a spoon, even though Berg felt like a little prison. When I was there, I was really happy. It kind of felt really free knowing that now I'm going to do four years without my family or anything. It's the start of a journey. I'd always drawn as a kid. You think that drawing a chair is pretty easy and so you get one line right and then he'll come around and he's like oh that line is a little wrong then you fix the line and then he comes around and he's like, oh that line is still wrong and so for the next three weeks he just keeps doing that again and again and again do you like to turn your art into a job then well we do a citizenship it's Dang. the best of both worlds i can work in europe and in the states i like the states but then after maybe 10 years would want to live somewhere else probably europe paris is very nice but honestly also uh, live in vietnam would be very cool hey welcome back to college i'm your host zach stevenson before we begin today i just want to mention that this podcast is not sponsored I don't run ads and the reason I've spent so much time, effort and energy and money on this is for two reasons. One is because I deeply care about the guests, my friends who made my time in the US so special. Secondly, because I want to make this as entertaining, as interesting and engaging as possible to share these incredible transformations that we had during our time at college in America. And so the only ask I have is if you are enjoying these episodes, please share them with a friend or family member that you believe will enjoy going back to college too. With that said, let's get on to the episode. Today, we're meeting up with someone whose combination of curiosity and sense of adventure led him to college in the US. He was always drawing as a kid as ultimately how he graduated with not only a computer science major, but an art degree. After coming to college from Bergen, Norway, he is currently working as a software engineer in Minneapolis, where he has mapped out his future to transition into a full-time artist. I hope you enjoy the conversation as we go back to college with Marcus. Marcus Ness. No, I fucked that up. No, that was good. That was good. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Marcus Ness. Yeah. Welcome nice. back to college. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it's been a long time and a lot has happened since we last saw each other. You've had a whole three extra years of college. Yes. Which yeah. is crazy to me because yeah. that's a long time. But we last saw each other back in 2020 when I abruptly just jumped on the plane, headed back home to Australia. And this is the first time we're catching up. We're in your apartment yeah. in Minneapolis, which yes, is we are. very nice. Thank you so much for hosting me here well, as thanks. we record. But what are you doing here in Minneapolis? Well, I'm working here now. I got a job after after I graduated as a software engineer at a place called Collins Aerospace. They build parts for uh, planes, so that's that's kind of fun. And it's going well for you so far? Yeah, it's fun. It's uh, you know, I learn a lot and it's an office job. I'm doing hybrid, so I get to spend three usually three days at home or three days at the office out of the week so it's a lot of flexibility yeah okay yeah. and so you, you graduated earlier this year right in the spring yeah i've only been off for six months yeah that's crazy and i think you've done a bit of traveling even since then yeah i mean this summer last summer we traveled through europe we went on trains from germany through uh, Netherlands and then Paris and Switzerland and and uh, Italy and then back to Norway to spend uh, the rest of the summer there and my girlfriend Harley came with. Nice. Yeah. I was going to say we. Who is we? We. That's me and Harley. That's who's living here. Terrific. And I'm I'm going to sit down with her afterwards and we're going to have a bit of a chat too. Yes. Which um which we we'll get to later on because you guys weren't together back by no, the time I left. No, so I think there's right. there's a few things to talk about there. Yeah. But if Marcus, if you want to wind back and sort of tell me how you first came over to the US because you're from Norway. Yeah. Yeah. I was born and raised in Norway, Bergen, Norway. And uh, I came over here for college and 
after high school. I mean, during my last year of high school, I didn't really know that I was going to come to the States. I knew I wanted to study somewhere else, maybe Oslo, which is the biggest city in Norway. And I kind of was set on that. But then my mom and her whole side is American. And so it was kind of floating around, maybe going to the States. And of course, we'd visited as kids, visiting my aunt in Florida and stuff like that. And then I I believe it was my mom or dad, doesn't really matter, but they came to me and be like, hey, do you want to do college in the States? And me, I, I haven't really been afraid of going away from home. So that sounded like something fun. And I could imagine your mom being American, she must have had, I'm guessing, that college experience. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I'm sure she would have sort of wanted to push you and influence you to maybe yeah. do the same because yeah. it is such a great experience. Yeah, it is. And I definitely grew a lot being away from home. Yeah. 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 And so what was the, the schooling like for you in Norway? Did you Would you class yourself as a studious person? No. No. No, no I was... In school, I was always like middle, nothing really special. And computer science was the one thing that and natural science that I was really interested in. And so I did a computer science degree at Augie. So were you doing that in Norway before you came over? I did one class of web development. Yeah, it was a messy class. The teacher didn't care at all. And we would sit and program like just fun web pages. And I think honestly, that's why I started liking it. If it was like a hard class where you were learning and it was kind of boring, I don't think I'd gone into computer science, but being so free in that class kind of led me down that path. You got a few little kitties roaming around. Yeah, two cats. Did you want to introduce them? Well, it's Cashew and Mochi there. They're over there. Yeah, you can. Yeah, they're little cuties. We've got Harley behind the the scenes here. Yeah, we've got a live audience today. Harley, audience of one. And I guess if you count the, the cats, it's two and three. There he is. Who's this? This is Mochi. He's the first cat we got. He's... <laughs> you want to say hi? <laughs> hey, how cute. <laughs> and she and she's a Augie cat, yeah? He, yeah. Oh, he, Both of sorry. them are guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you had Mochi back at Augie. Yeah, well, Harley was the one who got him. Now we say we because... I live with him too, but yeah. yeah, we did. And um Yeah, but Harley always lived outside of school. Yeah. Outside of the dorms. So it's much easier to keep a cat then. But we did bring him into the dorm sometimes when we were drinking together. He'd be roaming around. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. And then the new one over here. Oh, it's gonna get off and I'll rip this off. Yeah. Yeah. You can take your headphones off if you want. Bit more of an interactive show today. Yeah, this is this is Cashew. He's a lot more um, Aww, vocal. Having a little nibble at the cable. <laughs> yeah, Cashew was trying to eat the um on my other microphone. I have it. There's a dead cat, and yeah, he was trying to chew that a little bit. Cashew, say hi. Cashew. Meow. Yeah, they don't. Okay. All right. Bye, Cashew. It was great to see you. (laughs) Bye-bye. All right. So then did you come to the US a little bit earlier, Marcus, before you started college? Was that even a little bit of high school in there? No, no. I did high school in Norway. Okay. The time I spent here in the States was always vacation. So maybe I have a bias towards the States being very fun. Yeah. And it was always it was always the coasts. Honestly, the, the also a mid- bit of California beach. Yeah, my my grandma she lived in California, so we would go over there. So I'd been in like L.A. and Vegas and Nevada, I believe. Yeah, I mean Vegas. <laughs> yeah, Vegas is in Nevada. So <laughs> yeah. growing up, then which was some of the holidays you did? Which was your favorite state or favorite city that you went to? Um. New York was always fun. I mean, my mom, my mom grew up in New York. Oh, so. she's from New York, is she? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, New York's such a crazy and chaotic yeah. city. I think I'm not sure if I'm a fan of it. I like the fact 
maybe not so much from a tourist perspective. Mm-hmm. I don't think I think it's pretty crowded and just sort of yeah, too chaotic yeah. for that. But I think from a work perspective, there's yeah. lots of very outgoing, ambitious people who live in New York. It's very creative, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, that's why I was because there's a few people like podcasts and other filmmakers that I know. They a lot of them work in New York and they just really get after it and yeah. doing really cool yeah. things. So that's yeah. sort of why I'm sort of a little bit drawn to that. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting that you found New York was your favorite place. Was there anything in particular that, that drew you to that? It's kind of fast paced and everything is like very what pushed together. I'd say the buildings are close by like close to each other and you have the, I mean the park in the middle central park central yeah. park yeah that one's so so cool and then you cuz in the midwest everything is so far away but you can actually walk to things in new york you don't have to like take a 20 minute drive to the other side of the city well it's very practical unless yeah. maybe you do have to drive and then you're stuck in truckloads yeah, of traffic yeah yeah well that's true they have the subway but the subway isn't exactly the cleanest yeah 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 i didn't like the subway Mm. no 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 the subway is not that fun so how then did you actually come across augie because i feel like that's almost the golden question for all of us international students out of all the places you go in the u.s landing in the middle of south dakota yeah like i said my mom she or we would always travel on the coast so my mom always say oh the midwest that's the flyover states yeah yeah and um i had never been to the midwest before and we just looked at different schools and because of me be- coming from Norway, we were looking at schools that would give grants to Norwegians. And so we looked at, I can't remember, one other one that was called Oli or Ola. Either way, we just looked at all of them and I, I believe Ben, Ben was the one who contacted. He had come to, oh, that's right. Yeah, he came to my school while I was gone he came to my little brother and said that you guys can come over for J term and do like college classes while you're in high school so they had that link and I believe that's how I then started looking for colleges and after look at all the other ones because I knew Ben I kind of just went to that one Mm, that's super fascinating so Augie obviously did a great job of getting out there and do their in-person recruiting yeah which they're very good at. They go to countries all over the world. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's interesting to hear that from firsthand experience that that actually works and, it, yeah. and you build that trust yeah. straight away. Yeah. I was trying not to be biased, but looking at websites and not being able to tour the campus of these other places, if you know someone at somewhere, you kind of just want to go there instead. Yeah. So was there any other criteria you had for finding a college? No, because... I hadn't thought about it for that long. Oslo was my first choice. And so it was mostly just if I could do computer science there. And Augie seemed to have a good STEM um, majors there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So again, it's, it's, it's hard to say exactly why I chose. I probably ha- would have had a better answer right when I, when I got there. Yeah. And so yeah. What, what was it like when you actually got over? Like maybe that first day of travel. Oh, Could yeah. you describe to to me what that's that was like? I just remember like getting picked up by two girls who were working for the IPO. And when I got there, it was just pitch black. And it's it, you feel like you're like in nowhere's land because you don't know like any of the campus. Oh, so you arrived, now, you arrived at midnight? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. After the flight, completely dead. And I got there and it's like, where am I? I believe I was dropped off in front of Berg or something. I got into my room and it's like empty. And IPO was nice enough to give us the little lunch bag of food. And so I ate my uh, mac and cheese on my bed there without a spoon because I didn't give a spoon, <laughs> which is kind of kind of stupid. But um, yeah, and I, I felt really happy though, even though... Berg felt like a little uh, little prison. I didn't care that much about how how my place looked, but uh, when I was there, I was really happy. I kind of felt really free because even though I'd gone I'd gone on camps and stuff when I was a kid, 
without my parents. But when I was there, knowing that now I'm going to do four years without my family or anything, it's like the start of a journey. So yeah. I think I can really relate yeah. to that from my experience because I remember just going on the plane and that whole journey to get to the US and then finally arriving on campus. It was very much excitement just feel like hey yeah. this is the next chapter i've got no idea what's coming next but i know that i'm in the right place yeah no that's how i felt too yeah it's an ma- amazing feeling and very very powerful yeah so then how did that how was the first little bit settling in then it was the first part was you know the ipo orientation and all of that and that was fun but it was like once school started then it started ramping up because then parties started coming around and you were doing classes and all of that so i went to i was invited to like the international house for like party and stuff like that and at home we have of course you know your house parties but they're not like the states right at home we'd maybe sit at someone's place and drink and stuff like that and then go out but the states it's like filled with people yeah Bit of commentary on the side. <laughs> and so you got into the party scene pretty quick then. Yeah. Yeah. The first first week of school, my roommate was like, uh, I was out partying and then didn't come back without telling him. And he was like, hey, where are you? And stuff. But I, I'm not the biggest like party person. It was only the first six months when you get there, you have that high from coming over to the school and that's after that i didn't really go out to the american parties that much no well i think when you as soon as you get there you are sort of hit by just a whole wave of everything just being completely new and you have to make new friends you're doing new activities you're in a whole different new place oh yeah yeah so it's it's very full-on did you have any language barrier issues at all no because my, I always spoke English to my mom, even at home. So, I, so that made it a lot easier then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I never... I mean, I did have much of much more of a Norwegian accent than I do now. And now it's kind of funny because the internationals will be like, oh, my God, you sound exactly like an American. I thought you were American. And the Americans are like, where's this accent from? It's I can't pinpoint it. So it's like in between. Yeah, the, yeah. the middle ground in between. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I think I, I definitely picked up a little bit of an accent the four years over it. Over oh, in the really? US, yeah. Well, I, not that I could hear it, but definitely people back home when I finally arrived mm-hmm. back, they were just like, hang on, you're not, you sound a little bit American there, Zach. <laughs> yeah, I came back home again and my brothers started speaking English, or of course, they spoke English to my mom. And I was like, oh, your English isn't that good, like compared to me now after four years. So I kind of like that though. Yeah. So in your first year, if you can just remember back, were there any, particular highlights that stood out to you well i guess meeting harley yeah 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 well let's talk about that then so because you guys started as friends yeah and that's how i knew you guys for yeah. the first year or so it kind of happened organically yeah we started off as friends and then from there it was always just exciting to talk to her it was always every time i had the time to talk to her alone or just be able to even if we were in a big group i'd always try and talk to her and then over time we kind of got closer yeah yeah it's such such a great way for a relationship to form just naturally through friendship and just spending more and more time with one another yeah, I'm definitely happy that I met her in person and not through like Tinder or something like that. Yeah. I mean, that's a great way to find, but you kind of have more of a confidence in your relationship knowing that of all the people just around, you just found each other. Yeah. Terrific. And who were some of your first friends that you met at Augie? Well, we had international people were always like my first because we had the um, the mm-hmm. IPO trip and from there those are the first people you know and those people have other international friends so you know other people probably talked about it how the international group stays together but it was harley and i and then Brittany and jerry and sasha who you're gonna do a podcast with 
Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, had Jerry, episode 12. Had um, a great, great catch up with him. Oh, yeah. Online? Yeah. 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 So that was good fun. I'm, I'm still trying to hunt down the others. Sasha, hopefully, I can catch up with in person in the next few days or mm. so mm. before she heads off back home to Russia. What was some of the, what were the classes like for you, Marcus? Did you find them difficult? Because I know for me personally, it was very much a step up from the high school work mm -hmm. that I did. There was a little bit of overlap in the coursework, but I definitely mm -hmm. found that just as a whole, the classes were pretty challenging. Yeah, for me, it mostly was harder to like study on my own because in, in high school, you just get assignments. And if you do those, you don't have to study too much on your own. But college, it was like, oh, you get your own assignments, but for tests and things, you need to study. So the computer science part for me was the most challenging because I did a computer science degree and an art degree too. At the same time, or two bachelors. I tagged on a uh, data science minor, but that was just because it was overlapping with my computer science and I could just get it. Just do a few more classes to tick yeah. the box and get the yeah, minor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you hear people who have like three majors and... All of that. Yeah. Well, I mean, for psychology, I accidentally just fell into that after taking the elective course. Oh. <laughs> so, I mean, that sort of happened by accident. Yeah. But where did the art come from? It, I'd always drawn as a kid. And about a year before I came to Augie, I really started liking drawing and a little bit of painting. And so when I came to Right before I went to Augie, I knew that I could do a dual degree and I really didn't know uh, if I wanted to do two computers, you know, like information systems and then a computer science degree. I kind of wanted to do something else. I'm very happy that I did the art degree at the same time because it allowed me to come out from a computer science class and then be able to focus on something completely else. Like you don't feel as drained as doing a whole day of just you know, math or computer science. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And what were some of the favorite art classes that you took? Probably drawing class because yeah. my teacher, Scott, and painting class because he was in that too. He's, I, I, to me, he was the best art teacher at Augie, so I kept taking his classes. He's just very talented. And Who was it? Scott, Scott Parsons. Scott Parsons. Yeah. What made him so good? He's... He wasn't very focused on, or he was focused on you expressing yourself and doing it your own way. But to me, that way never really led to learning art and getting better at art. It's always that like he approached it more from studying. He would sit us down and we'd use almost like three weeks on drawing a chair, just one chair. And so that's like the one. Thing if you ask any art student at Augie that they dread is you sit down. Oh, hey, Cash. Hello. You sit down and then. Hey, that's my water. He puts a chair in front of us and everyone's sitting around and have this big easel with a drawing board. And so you think that drawing a chair is pretty easy because you see all these other artworks are people that draw humans and animals and landscapes. And you just need, you just need to draw a chair. And so you get one line right and then you draw like the box for the chair and then he'll come around and he's like, oh, that line is a little wrong. And then you fix the line and then he comes around and he's like, oh, that line is still wrong. And it's like amazing how you can't see the difference between just a little angle. And so for the next three weeks, he just keeps doing that again and again and again and again. And so that, that way of teaching got me a lot better and why I kind of respect him as a teacher. Mm, that's very fascinating. I don't think yeah. I've ever heard of an art professor doing something like that and going to that extreme yeah. level of detail yeah. and perfectionism as well to really yeah. hone in the fundamentals and get them right. Because drawing a chair isn't that hard, but drawing the chair in front of you, it's supposed to look at look like the chair in front of you and oh, so not a it generic chair. Yeah, no abstraction. It was very much like draw what you see. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So there was a very definitive like, this is not yeah. right do it like this yeah 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 it's a great way to really hone your skills i'm sure yeah i bet you have improved a lot from yeah three weeks of drawing a chair <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i remember i took a ceramics class oh i did the ceramic did you have jerry yeah i did yeah he's great 
Yeah. I actually met Jerry before I got him as a uh, as a teacher in a class because I was playing basketball with him. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because yeah, he would always play the, I think it was like Thursday afternoon yeah, pickup game. Yeah, I was game. there, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He'd be running around with his shirt off. He's probably, I don't want to age shame, but maybe like 70, 80 years old maybe. Yeah. yeah but I he's still so. one of the fittest guys out there, just running yeah. around, still balling. And he's like, how tall is he? He's pretty tall. Yeah, it'd be he's at least six foot three. beard down to his chest. Yeah. He's like Jesus running on the basketball court. Yeah. And yeah. Jerry taught me some really interesting perspectives that I still use today in my video work, mm. just in terms of um, just visual pathways and where our eye sort of is drawn yeah. to initially yeah. and then like where it wanders yeah. throughout a piece. Yeah. And so I still think about that today, which I wasn't expecting going into a, an elective ceramics class to learn something mm. like that. Yeah, I took it the last semester he was there. And so I was so happy I got that. It was such a great class. Was there any other culture shocks that you felt during your time at Augie? Maybe um, when it came to food? How did you find the food? The food was fine. Yeah. yeah. Not that. I mean, Norwegian food is probably pretty close to some of the more boring foods here in the in the Midwest. And then, of course, you have all the international food, which... My mom always cooked international food. So when I came here and I could do that, that was fine. And I never had a problem with, uh, at least the first year with commons. I was, I, I don't think I'm that. Uh, not that picky. No, not that picky. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought the commons was pretty good. I mean, the fact, like the sheer convenience of it was pretty good. Yeah, incredible. that was the best part. Just rocking yeah. up like, oh, some of that, some of that. Yeah. Bang, eat it, go along the wall of drinks. I'll just have this, this, this. When I went. Up. When I walked past Commons, I would always sometimes just walk up, get a peanut butter sandwich, and then walk out. Just constantly eating, yeah. Yeah, the unlimited meal pass was yeah. pretty... The, the meal <laughs> pass, that was very clutch indeed. What What are some of the typical Norwegian foods that you guys eat? Well, potatoes, meatballs. Lutefisk? Uh, Lutefisk, yeah. Lutefisk. What, yeah. what is that exactly? It's fish that has been... Well, it's uh, cod that has been put into lye. I don't remember exactly what lye is. Which but it's, it's like a tar, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yes. And it makes the fish almost see-through and like a jello. So if you have it on a plate and shake it, it's going to shake a little bit after you stop. Oh, God, that sounds disgusting. And it's it's one of those foods that's up there with durian as like the, mo- the world's most smelly food. And I never understood that, but... That's because we put bacon fat on top of ours. Yeah. Mm. People, I've heard other people try and eat lutefisk and it's like they just have the fish and I, you have to have the bacon fat. So we always have a bowl of pieces of bacon and it's also like filled up with bacon fat. You take that and put it on top. Mm, that kind of sounds all yeah. right. Yeah. But my, to pick my interest there. Yeah. But my, mo- my favorite Norwegian traditional dish is uh, pinnishet, which okay. is lamb and it's cured. I'll probably make some this uh, this Christmas because I'm not going home. Just order some over here, and it's it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean the the food in Norway sounds pretty incredible. Not maybe not too different to the US in terms of I guess if you compare it to maybe an Asian country where you get more spices oh, yeah. and that yeah. that sort of thing. Well, the food focuses and a lot of European, Western European, like German, maybe Netherlands. And then all of Scandinavia focus more on the taste of the actual vegetables and the meats. So when you hear always the joke that, you know, that white people's spices are just salt and pepper, it's a lot because when we have lamb, it tastes like lamb. Like the whole house will smell like lamb. And a lot of people who might like lamb in Indian dishes or in other East Asian dishes then try and have lamb the way we have it. They're like, Wait, you keep the smell there? Like, you're supposed to get rid of the smell with all the spices and stuff. It's like, no, you need to taste the meat, right? And the same with fish. You could just steam fish and just have that. You don't have to have spices or anything, which I kind of like because sometimes it's too many spices to me, for me. Yeah, it gets a little bit overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. It's like you can't even taste the fish or can't even taste the meat. Yeah, it's more so just getting the really good ingredients and just, you know, yeah cherishing them and really tasting them to yeah. the best of their ability yeah. yeah interesting 
And so you're an active person and yeah. you mentioned that you used to run around the basketball court with Jerry, the ceramics yeah, professor. Yeah. What were some of the other activities you did to stay active while you were at college? I did basketball intramurals and then I did, well, that was one of the biggest ones I did. I did in a snowboarding class too, because at home I snowboard all the time. And God, what else did I do? And so what were the intramurals like? If you wanted to just explain yeah. that for maybe someone that wouldn't know what even, I didn't even know what intramural meant before I got to Augie. Yeah, so the intramurals are just, you. the school sets up a league for people who are not on the basketball team or don't tend to play it professionally or very well. And they'll have different leagues, like a harder league and a more one for people who just want to play for fun it's just a league for pe- for students to play and have fun and so you set up your own team which is very fun because it's all your friends on one team battling other people at the campus which you see every day so it's 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 great and so they do that over the whole semester different kind of leagues five on fives three on threes three on threes might be my favorite half court three on threes yeah because you get the ball a lot and you can do like very simple fast um it's a very Fast, very yeah. high paced, yeah. high tempo yeah. game. I remember when I was back in Australia. I think it was last year. Um, I was playing some basketball at a, um, with a few of my old friends mm-hmm. in one of the the clubs that I, they were playing for. But mm-hmm. then a few of my teammates were playing in a three on three comp, so I actually joined them for that. Oh, and I yeah. couldn't believe just how fast paced yeah, that game yeah. is. It's it's literally you don't stop the whole time because the ball goes through the hoop. And yeah. then you grab, grab it straight it. away yeah. out to the three-point line to clear it and then back on again. Yeah. And if someone misses, it's just like rebound, keep going, rebound, keep going. Well, yeah. it's definitely a good exercise. And so you, you said that you did the snowboarding class oh, as yeah. well, even well, though you know how to snowboard pretty damn well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that one was because I needed one more physical ed and... Why not Perfect, do snowboarding? Yeah. yeah. So good excuse to get out there on the slope, even though oh, yeah. Great Bear, just a small little slant. Nothing yeah. Nothing too crazy. At home, we have a cabin up in the mountains. And so snowboarding in Sioux Falls was uh, very unattractive to me. Yeah. So but you, would, they, you would have done tons of snowboarding growing up then. Yeah. We would go up every other weekend since I was maybe five. Maybe I started at five, six, something. Not snowboarding, but skiing. I started snowboarding maybe 12 or something like that. And then I stuck with that. Yeah. After you mastered skiing, oh, you know, maybe I'll try some snowboarding. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, That's awesome. Well, I learned to snowboard um, while I was at Augie. I I took that class and I had done some uh, some skiing before that. Mm -hmm. I actually learned to ski in Austria of all places. Jesus. (laughs) Because I was in, um, I did a 10 week exchange to Germany. Oh, and so my host family, we just went down to Austria. I think my host mum took me just for a day or so. Yeah, just you know, a casual two-hour drive to yeah. the Austrian Alps. Yeah, to get a few laps in because in on New Year's, which was a few weeks later, we did a, a bigger skiing trip. Mm. So um, that's where I learned to ski. God, New um, Year's there must have been awesome. Oh uh, yeah, no, it was it was super cool. I remember um my host father just bought tons and tons of fireworks i mean oh, we, yeah. we were lighting them non-stop like the whole evening and we still had we probably only got through half of them there's huh. just so many we used to do that at home at the cabin everyone would just buy um fireworks and because it's on the mountain you have all the houses down like that so if we're here and someone shoots a firework here, it's going to explode at eye level for us. <laughs> so it's like the whole mountain just shooting up fireworks. And because it's snow up there, the other mountain on the other side will have like colors on it from the from the fireworks. That sounds like a heap of fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'll go back next next some, uh, next winter to experience it. There wasn't ever really too many fireworks in Sioux Falls though, was there? No. 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 Is it? It's legal though, because there's definitely the big warehouses you see on the side of the highway. Yeah, fireworks. Yeah, yeah. get yeah. your fireworks. Yeah, I don't know about the laws. Sometimes you have to do it in a designated area instead of like in your backyard. Yeah, yeah. Or well, New Year's Eve is always kind of fun. Yeah. What did you sort of do during like Christmas time and Thanksgiving? Because that that's pretty big in the US. And oh, yeah. I remember, like for me, I would go home with friends and spend some time there. What how did you fill in those breaks? 
Well, I usually went home for Christmas because Christmas for me is probably my favorite holiday just because of our cabin. Because it is like, if you think of a cabin in the in the snow, like very pretty, made of wood, it's it's exactly that. And so we would go up there and our family would come. We have like 10 beds there and we have a fireplace and a really nice um, living room where we have couches and everything. So during Christmas, we would, well, me and my brothers and my dad would go out in the woods, ask one of the farmers if we can take one of the trees he has up on the mountain because the farmers will own like a whole section of the mountain. And so we would go there and climb up the tree and saw down like, half of the tree and then take it home yeah and then setting up the tree and just spending christmas there with all the snow there because it snows a lot maybe one to three meters oh one to three meters yeah oh my god yeah we would so much we would jump off the roof of the of the cabin into the snow it would catch us to down (laughs) here oh my god yeah (laughs) that's hilarious well i mean there's lots of snow in sioux falls but probably not quite that much no it's it's very cold in Sioux Falls, almost as cold as Norway or in Bergen, at least. If you go north, then it gets way too cold. But yeah, it doesn't snow that much. Not in Sioux so Falls. So Norway sits above Sioux Falls? Uh, if you look yeah, at the, no, it's, um, it's above. It's up in Canada or maybe Alaska because one third of it is in the Arctic Circle. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's I've just, never really thought about yeah, how high up it is. But yeah, yeah that would get extremely cold yeah. then. The roof of uh, Europe, as they say. Yeah. But it doesn't, it gets maybe as cold as Sioux Falls because we get the ocean from the Gulf of Mexico and that water. It's still cold, but kind of warm. So it keeps Norway from just being completely frozen. Yeah. Yeah, that's super cool. I remember we spent quite a bit of time going to Great Bear because while Max and I were taking Mm -hmm. the class, we just wanted to do extra laps because I think we had... I think we gained access to the to the to the hill or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I remember we just wanted more and more practice. So we'd often go with you because you were just itching to get back yeah, on the snowboard again. Yeah. I think we had one of your friends who worked at Great Bear would often oh, take yeah, us as yeah, well. Yeah. Well, don't get me wrong. It was it's really fun to snowboard there because they have the um the jumps and stuff like that. You don't need a big mountain for a park where you can do jumps because you would do the jumps and you just get on the rope. I mean, and they had the rope you toe. Yeah. So you could do two quick little jumps and then just grab the rope toe and go straight back up. It goes straight up, up again. Although that, uh, <laughs> we were not that good, Max yeah. and I, we because we'd only just learnt, we, like, we shouldn't have been going over the jumps, period. Yeah, I remember that. But yeah. then we're trying to go over the jumps and then quickly shoot off to the side to grab on the rope toe. But we would always just end up further down the hill, falling over <laughs> and just getting in people's way yeah. as well. Um, but we were just trying to push ourselves and get as good as we could. Now that rope is brutal. You get it and it tugs you so hard. It yeah, might... I think think a lot of our gloves, they just got shredded My to bits. gloves are shredded, yeah. I had to do it without gloves afterwards. You kind of go with your hands when it comes because if you just grab, it's going to start ripping your skin. It's 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 That's uh, brutal. <laughs> it works, but it's, yeah. So then the time after Max and I left, yeah, what was your augie experience like after that well because we went through our freshman year and then COVID came and so then we were because we're international everyone had to go home unless your your home is too far away then you can stay on campus and so campus was empty and we were doing like online classes oh, so did, was, you, did you stay yeah we stayed oh harley and i stayed yeah i had a place in in we were sent to Stavik, I think. It was so weird. It was completely empty, the campus. Well, it was empty by the time Max and I left. Yeah. So. But when we were there, it was like, you'd see, you could walk out and it would be like in the middle of summer, how it was if you're an international student and if you've been over summer, you know that it's like empty. And so that was a very slow down because my freshman year was a lot of activities, doing intramurals getting onto clubs and doing all of that. And so when COVID came, it just kind of halted. And it kind of got me to reorganize myself and get ready for it because I did better academically after my first year. Yeah, so you had just more time to focus on the school because yeah. there wasn't as much happening. No. But no. there's a lot of 
I think they tried to bring it back to normal during that time, but I think it was still yeah not quite right because people were still wearing masks. Yeah, the mask thing was so irritating. Yeah, and the teachers oh. having the plexiglass in front of them. Oh, did they really? Yeah, they did. Oh my yeah. gosh! In every classroom, they just had a big every screen classroom, yeah. in front yeah. of them. Classrooms at the Commons, they had it. Elman, everyone had it. Yeah. Yeah, that must have been so strange. I you could, know, I couldn't imagine Augie like that. The worst was intramurals. You had to wear masks. Oh, while playing. <laughs> while playing basketball. While completely out of breath, trying yeah. to <laughs> you're just sucking in the mask. Yeah. You'd always have people putting it but underneath the nose and the refs have to tell you to put it on, but it was like brutal. But after that, once you could take off your mask again, oh my God, your cardio is so much better. You're like... <sighs> can finally breathe yeah how good is this yeah. now we can actually <laughs> run now that we have a little bit of oxygen we can last longer than two seconds i believe the football team actually had to wear masks while playing helmets and then a mask underneath really yeah for their competitions i know they did that for the practices yeah yeah man that's that is cool. insane yeah. yeah well i think it was different for us back in australia because we just kind of said just no physical activity Oh, it's like you could go outside for walks, but there was no organized sport. No, yeah, nothing. The mid the Midwest was kind of lax with COVID, though. Uh, hearing COVID from your side and from my parents' side in Norway, it was much more of a lockdown. In Sioux Falls, if you you could go to the grocery store and there would still be people there, and people some people of course would have their masks off too. Yeah, yeah. So we didn't really, even though everyone was gone from school and. Like you could really see that COVID was happening because campus was empty. Other parts of society in Sioux Falls was just kind of running the same, just with a mask on. Yeah. 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 It's so sad. What What else happened during that time? During those three years? God. My memory is never that good. I yeah. always forget things. Well, that's the thing because, and that's why I like to to talk to everyone yeah. on the podcast because there's. I, I mean, I honestly think about my time of college probably too much. Mm. I think that's probably why I had to come back here to oh, talk yeah. to everyone again <laughs> to kind of relive it and get a little bit of closure on the fact that I had to leave so quickly and didn't get yeah. to walk and graduate properly. Yeah, at least we got to graduate, yeah, with a proper ceremony and everything. Well, do you want to talk about that? Because I would love to hear what oh. it is like to graduate in the US. Well, my parents came over and... That was awesome. But to me, the most fun part was walking around taking pictures. We were walking around with Sasha and just with our ropes and everything and our pins and just seeing everyone else. Like every, it was so happy. And it's, you know, sun and summer in Sioux Falls is really nice because mm, the campus such a good has, vibe. campus has a lot of nice trees, even though one of the biggest ones that everyone loved got chopped down because they wanted to build like a football field in was front of was, commons. Was that in the middle of the green? Yeah. Oh, they didn't chop that down, did they? Yeah, they did. Jeez. And then the the part where they have water going, that's completely gone. They made like a, a football field there so you can play intramurals and things like that. Oh, really? Like a, f- a full-size football field? Well, it's... Must be condensed they, down a little bit. No, it's not a full-size football field, but... It's they put up lights like football field lights. I don't know how to explain it, but yeah. they put that up, and then um, it's natural grass. So it now it's instead of being like having the water and the and be a little bit more hilly, it's like completely flat now. And so that idea, I think it's, I think other big colleges have it, and because Augie wants to become big. They, they needed to yeah well because there's this push for Augie yeah. 2030 or whatever yeah. D1 yeah so I think the the college is definitely changing quite a bit yeah and I think there's from a few people I've talked to about there's a concern that Augie's sort of letting go of maybe that the smaller more intimate values that they had are yeah. kind of being left behind yeah. because we're like really pursuing excellence yeah. to become a bigger school and become like to compete in division yeah. one well um i'm out of it now so that that won't affect me yeah because they got a hockey place now i would yes. have loved to see hockey i wasn't I, a big I, football guy or... i'm itching to go i think they play because they've, they've built a five million dollar new stadium <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. Which I think will be done in the next few weeks. And their first home game where they play in that stadium will be January 26. So I think I might, even though I'm planning to do a bit of a snowboarding trip after, mm. like into the new year, I think I feel like I might have to come back to watch the first no, like, yeah. Augie ice hockey home game. Yeah. Well, I think it's just so cool. Yeah, it's definitely cool. But maybe they should have renovated two of instead. That thing doesn't have AC. And now we have a new hockey place. It's like priorities. It's definitely showing that they want to be like a D1 school. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's interesting to see how they've been changing yeah. the campus. And because there's well, they, a whole new residential hall as well. Yeah, Wagner. That one's in the middle. Because you have Berg, Solberg, and then Wagner's in the middle. And it is so nice. Even though they rushed it and then... Was that was there leakage. when you were there? Uh, yeah, my last year. Yeah, yeah, it was there. So, and that was that a freshman hall? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so you didn't get to live in there? No, no. I mean, it was. I, I was doing VA, so I could have gotten there, and I was the old, like one of the senior VAs. So I was like, okay, shouldn't you give me this one? But they were like, no, and they gave it to like VAs who were like first year as VA, and I was like, oh. That place was so nice. Mm. Yeah, yeah I've, I've I've done the virtual tour online. Oh, they have a virtual tour. Yeah, you can walk through the whole place. Jeez. Like they've got a kitchen area. Um, it's just all the, yeah, the, the rooms themselves are just used. super nice, yeah. super clean. We did a Thanksgiving there because every Thanksgiving the internationals get together and we have like a potluck where everyone ba- brings their own meal. And so the area in uh, in Wagner, it's it's really nice, very open, and you could cook there and. Um, so we had Thanksgiving there with maybe 20 people, something like that. It was always nice how the internationals like uh, organize things, I guess. Yeah. And so then what happened after you, that graduation, after you took all your pictures outside in the nice <laughs> springtime of Sioux Falls, what did you do after that? Like during graduation or? Well, just after you'd graduated. Well, after I graduated, Harley and I took a, well, we first went up to Minneapolis with my parents and her mom, and that was really fun. And then we went to Chicago with my parents. Uh, her mom had flown back to Vietnam, and then we went back to Norway for a few days before we started backpacking Europe. Oh, uh, backpacking that Europe. That was pretty awesome. It's like a graduation trip, yeah, before you start working. Yeah, like a mini little gap year. Yeah. Two yeah. or three months. Oh, yeah. So how, how long did you go for? It was about three months, was it? No, it was... God, how, how long was it? Yeah, a month and a half, about. And we spent two weeks, two and a half. It was like 50-50, Norway and um, other parts of, of Europe. Europe. Yeah, because yeah. we spent four days in Bergen and then we flew down to Berlin where we started. And we were taking trains the whole way. So it was from Berlin to Amsterdam to Paris, Switzerland, and then Italy. Yeah, right. That was pretty awesome. That's amazing. Which was your favorite location? God. (laughs) Uh, Rome has always been my... my, We went there for school multiple times because I grew up in a Catholic school. And so Rome is like the pilgrimage site. So with I'd gone two times with my parents and then with the school we'd gone two times. So I that of all the places I loved always going back there, but Florence and Paris is something special. That was because Florence compared to um Rome, where it's a little bit more modern, Florence really keeps that old Renaissance or even medieval vibe where all the like the town plazas are really close by. Dang, that's so sick. Yeah. yeah. I've never been to Italy, but it's very high on my list to go check oh, out. Oh, you should go. Yeah. Yeah. What about Norway? Should I go visit Norway? Ah, uh, you should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bergen, Oslo. You don't need to go to Oslo. Just no? go to Bergen. That's yeah, all you okay. need. Okay. And I know Kevin, who's episode one, my best friend from Augie. He's oh, from yeah. Grimstad, which is down south of yeah. Norway. Yeah. He says it's, this is Kevin's words, not mine, but he <laughs> says, he claims that there's a light that shines all the way out from the universe and it shines just on the little pearl of the universe and that's Grimstad. That's Grimstad. Yeah. Yeah, of course he said that. <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess I'd like to go and find out for myself. Well, 
in Bergen, we always say that Bergen is the most beautiful place in Norway or city in Norway. Is it and along the coast? It is by the coast and it's a city surrounded by seven mountains. And so you have the seven mountains around like a bowl and the city is there and the ocean comes straight in. And it's, it's so nice because you can just go straight up a pretty easy hike and then you can see the small town there and then you see the whole ocean or some more mountains and then the ocean further away. So it's very hard to beat. Yeah, sounds spectacular. Yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely going to go there soon. Sooner rather than later, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And now we actually almost met up last year. Yeah. Well, actually, it was the start of this year in January. Yeah. I had just come off the back of almost three months in Vietnam and you and Harley were going back because Harley's from Vietnam. Yeah. So we were, you, you guys were going back just for, for a visit and yeah. that was your first time in Vietnam, yeah? Uh, second time. Second time. Yeah. There you go. Um, but, but I think we missed each other by about a week or two. Yeah, but I met your brother, yeah. Max. But yeah. then Max went there two weeks later and then he met up with you. So I yeah. was that was pretty crazy. Pissed off about yeah. that. But yeah, I, I think you guys had a good time. Oh, yeah. The funny thing is that before that I was in, in uh, Bergen or in Norway and then I met an August student too, Manu Schmidt. So meeting her there and then another August student in Vietnam was like crazy. And then almost missing you. So annoying. Yeah, I can't believe it. Because yeah. I was there for so long and I was pissed. It's like, oh, I just need to stay for one <laughs> more week and then we could have made it work. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but so your second time in, in uh, Vietnam. First time was with my friends. We backpacked through Asia. Oh, did you really? After high school. Yeah. After high school. Yeah. So oh, that right. was pretty fun. Yeah. We all uh, stupidly shaved our heads before we went. So it was like... <laughs> Five bald guys going, yeah. Five bald white guys well, roaming through Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. Two, two black and one, one Asian. We were gonna live at his house for some time in Vietnam. Yeah. And what but, are your thoughts of Vietnam? Because for me, I thought it was one of my favorite countries I've ever been to. Oh yeah, definitely. The food is there's so much different things to eat. Like I. Uh, I always have my list of like Norwegian food and then Italian food, but Vietnam just, it keeps going. It's just more and more and more and different. And it's the street food is so awesome. I agree though. The food in Vietnam was spectacular yeah. and there's, there's so much variety as well. Yeah. Um, and it's, I found it quite a challenge to communicate with people there, mm. not being able to speak Vietnamese mm. was sort of the first time I had that real language, language barrier. barrier. Yeah. 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 Well, the two times I went, I had a friend that was Vietnamese, and then the second time Harley was, uh, she can speak. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, you just got to find yourself a local, get a tour guide. <laughs> yeah. So you've done quite a bit then since, or uh, well, since I left you there three, yeah. three and a half years ago now. Yeah. Wow. And then so you've you and Harley have since moved into this place in Minneapolis. Yeah. And you guys are just working, doing working. your thing. Yeah. What's the plan for you, for you next? Well, working and saving. I've always liked the like the mentality of having passive income and things like that. So probably buying a house later on, getting getting a mortgage and building that up. Already started on Robinhood and stuff like that. But also side projects. Like I said, art is kind of my passion and would like to get a lot better at that so after work even though it's you're kind of drained of energy when mm -hmm. you're in the office which is why working from home is nice but after that i'll try and get as much drawing in as i can yeah well you're working yeah. hybrid at the moment aren't you so you get yeah. a few days in the office but also yeah. a few days at home yeah. which is quite nice yeah and then are you still on the f1 visa no, I have an American passport. Oh, you've got a oh, because yeah, your mom. My oh, okay, mom. well, we didn't we didn't talk about that earlier. So you have an American passport. <laughs> yeah, I have a dual citizenship. Wow, Norwegian and American. It's it's Dang. the best of both worlds. And that's huge because the Norwegian passport it's allows strong. you access all yeah. through Europe yeah. as well. Yeah, I can work in Europe and in the states. That's kind of what I've thought of my future is maybe I know I like the states and. I want to move away from the Midwest to kind of experience something else. But then after about maybe 10 years, I would want to live somewhere else. Probably Europe. Paris is very nice.
but honestly also uh, live in vietnam would be very cool hey holly there you go and i know she would like to be at home too yeah yeah, yeah vietnam's a phenomenal country so i oh, think yeah. and i mean you've got options between the two of you well america <laughs> europe Asia, vietnam yeah bro you're all set is there any dream job that you'd like to have I mean, a dream job is always your hobby as a job. Computer is, science is, is... Is it though? If it makes money. <laughs> so you like to turn your art into a job then? Yeah. Is that, is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. But it takes a lot of work, especially for art. It's very competitive because everyone who likes art and is decent at it would want to change that into uh, into a profession. Yeah. But you quite like the computer science. No, I do like the computer science. And um, as a job, of course, it makes a lot of money. And it's it's very, uh, it always felt safe to me. So starting here, it's, I mean, I have this really nice apartment and lucky enough to get a- Super nice. And and you're in Uptown, which is just like very close to the main city as well. Yeah, yeah. No, probably, I don't know. I don't know how to change art to a job. It's- That'd be hard. Yeah. Well, yeah, it seems like you're doing extremely well. So keep up the great work. <laughs> Thanks. And Marcus, if you could give your experience at Augie, this is my favorite question. If you could give your experience at Augie a letter grade. A letter grade. A, B, C, D, E, F, including pluses or minuses, what would you give it? I never regret things. So A. Yeah. yeah. Not an A plus? No. A. no yeah just a solid a is just there a any solid a. so that, that well there must have been something then that sort of detracted that from being like the ultimate perfect experience it's hard to think of um just on my side i wish i would have done more yeah when you're at college it always feels like it's gonna last forever but then you're gone and it's like oh i should have been more active or done more clubs or all of that so. so so what were some of those specifics that you wish you had done a little bit more of another jerry ceramics class definitely because at the end of that class i kind of got a hang of ceramics and then i had to just rush to make as many things as i could because i knew that i wouldn't have another opportunity um yeah, that takes. Yeah. It's a skill that takes a while to grow. Yeah, I was very much the same where I yeah. backloaded all my stuff and I had to pump out lots of work yeah. to, at yeah. the end to make sure I could yeah. tick off all the criteria. Um, is there any other activities? Maybe more volleyball club. We didn't even talk about that, but you were very much into volleyball. Yeah, and we had fun at the volleyball club oh, together. Yeah, yeah, I did so much volleyball. Yeah, 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 and probably more sports. I did a lot of sports in my freshman and junior year and then no freshman and sophomore year and then junior and senior it kind of died out a little bit more and i should have just done as much as i could yeah Mm. well that's a hard one though because i guess you don't know during the time no but from what we've talked about i think you've had a very successful and very fulfilling college experience no it was great it was great i grew a lot yeah yeah and here you are now doing big (laughs) things So, and then to finish up, if there's some advice that you could give to someone, an international student who's thinking about maybe, do I want to come over to the US and study at college? What would you say to them? Well, you don't have to come to the States, but just live at least during college somewhere else than at home. Because you're always like relying on your family when you're at home. And then when you're on your own, you do grow a lot more it's kind of going on your own journey yeah so that's great advice and i think i i can very much relate to that and i think just being away from home the independence that you grow is just phenomenal yeah i mean it and it was super fun to do it in an environment where you're surrounded by friends living in the dorms yeah yeah. so many like-minded people around you and try and go to a smaller college because we would walk I mean, you definitely know you walk from one class to another and you see like two or three of your friends. But here in Minneapolis, if you had gone to the U of M, you would never see anyone, you know, you'd have to like 
find time to spend with them but i would sit at starbucks in in uh at augie and just study and then another friend would come over and say hi and i could talk to them and then they would leave and i'd study more and then a little dis- distracting but very fun yeah absolutely uh, yeah that's again two thousand odd students versus 10 20 000. yeah yeah it's too much makes a big difference but i think that's that's a very important point that you just brought up yeah I think we'll leave it there, Marcus. Thank you so much for coming back to college with me. Thank you.